Tales from the Wild. Stories from the Heart. A journey into the mind and soul of fired up business professionals where they share their vision for the future. And hear from a different non profit organization every month as they create awareness of their goals and their needs. Dive into a world of untamed passion as we join our host, Shireen Buerta, for this month's episode of Friends from Wild Places. You know, this podcast is all about this very thing. It's business owners and entrepreneurs just come in around the table and let's just chat. You know, share some of the struggles we've faced and how we've overcome them. And let me tell you, the imposter syndrome has come up so often. It is a very big thing that we all face as business owners and entrepreneurs. It's <laughs> real. And and I don't think you do ever get over that unless yep. you, and I can't speak for every business owner. So if you have gotten over that and you're listening, um, please, you know, reach love out to, know to the, the show. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on the show. Help me a new yeah. episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. How to overcome your imposter syndrome. I mean, I could, I could probably create an episode, but the, the real underlying secret is you will never get over okay. imposter syndrome. And you know what? I think it's actually a good thing. Imposter syndrome is a humbling feeling within you. So that way you can take a moment and just realize that it's not about you. I actually see it as like a, like a, like a balancing act because there's moments where you think, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I'm awesome. I'm the best. Shoot. I'm the number one guy. Then the imposter syndrome, because it's the loudest voice will say, no, you're not chill out, buddy. Chill out. You need to prove yourself every time you get the chance. I think it's a good thing. And that, I guess that's a, that's a way to overcome it. Use it as a tool to keep pushing forward and, and always improving. Mm -hmm. It's interesting in the, and the death care, realm which is which is my expertise is we use the word you know like a lot of people will say like you know getting over grief or getting over something as if it's it's like if it's a physical like you know going from point a over to point b when where the new verbiage is kind of like going um through it like you know getting through it so i think sometimes it's not it's almost like a journey within us that you said like it's never done and it's just part of us but it's just kind of quieting those voices uh, or voice when it you know becomes too loud as far as uh, you know exhibiting that imposter syndrome yeah that's that's true i mean it's like the grass is always greener on the other side. It's never true. It's basically you got to work with the grass you got. And if you have something you can't change, find a way to leverage it to your benefit. So I could totally see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's so real. Every day, I'm, it's something I'm fighting on a daily basis. You? Yeah. And you imposter? Come every on. Every day. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you guys do. I'm taking your word for it. But you guys do a really good job at acting like you are got your stuff together because no one will see that at all. Dr. T, when you when you give your lessons every week, I know, listen, I, I did it. I did what you did before. And, you know, there's preparation, and then there's just a natural. And, and you are a natural. Like, I bet you that you can wake up and, and just get on camera and get, you probably, you don't, don't admit it, but I bet you you could probably just do a quick little educational moment last minute and make it seem like you prepared like y yesterday you came up with hey everybody get a paper pencil let's do this it sounds like you planned that for weeks so for me i, I would have maybe maybe i would do that but you made it seem so natural if you didn't do that you know last minute you could have fooled me if you did it if you just did it last minute put it that way so yeah kudos to you you imposter you <laughs> Awesome. 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 She, she can exactly carlos that's oh, i'm, I'm exactly revealing it Tanya i'm to, revealing her secrets <laughs> she'll wake up and she can improvise something on the spot just like that and hence the reason her and i work very well for the podcast <laughs> she so for my educational moments right. i had to pre-record them i had to plan them See? and um i mean i, I enjoy it. i enjoy it but it, it takes time you can't really just rush it and I have fun with it. Like it's so fun to kind of create those little animated gifts. And I did all that, those little nuggets, little Easter eggs. But I, I, I wish I had your gift uh, to do it on the, 
I, I'm not saying you did it last minute. There's nothing that indicates you did it last minute. But if you did, I wish I had your skill to do that that way. Well, I'm going to get with you. I want to do animations. That, that's not my area. So I'm looking forward to working on animations with you. All right. Nice. We'll geek out together and animate it. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I think the amazing thing about us is there is a strength in each of us. And then there is a weakness. And um, you should so thrive in the strength. And you should definitely outsource your weaknesses. So that which you are not so good with, it's the best idea is to to rent a tanyan. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm going to add because you know if we're targeting entrepreneurs and business owners, because I, I learned this the hard way. So I, I always try to outsource my weaknesses. Mm -hmm. But there's one little extra step that I learned the hard way, and that's just because you you it's your weakness doesn't mean you don't need to understand it. I've learned that the hard way. Bookkeeping was one of them. <laughs> I'll just hire a professional to do it. And then at the end of the year, you realize, okay, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Well, you, you know, do we know this? Or, oh, but I didn't know that's what that meant. And maybe you don't have to be the expert in, in bookkeeping or whatever, but you definitely need to do your best to understand it because it's something that will impact your life. So my. listening to your voice, Shireen, if I had someone like you, softly telling me what I need to do. I think I would, I would gently accept it because if I was just like, you know, taught like a, like a, a rugged, Hey, Hey, Carlos, you need to do this. And my Marine Corps instincts would be like, look, listen, I'm a grown man. Don't talk to me like that. You know, you make it seem like you make the pain points seem smooth. So mm -hmm. good on you. So yeah, okay. understand. Carlos, I want to ask you another question on this, on the uh, fitness side. So obviously you take care of yourself working out, you know, you walk to the gym, you do your exercise there. What kind of water do you drink? Do you drink regular tap water, special water? I'm, I'm like a water connoisseur and I'm always looking for new, new ideas. Cause I no. see box 12, yeah. 14 hours a day. What do you like for water? Nothing, nothing special. Okay. Actually there's something special. So I learned that you just can't drink water. Why? Because it will flush your system out. So what I do is I do drink tap water from my fridge. I also um, have this little machine that I, I refill bottle in, in Publix, a supermarket over here. And I got a little machine that makes it nice and super cold. But what's special about my water is that I have this little container for electrolytes. And I put electrolytes in the water, flavorless electrolytes. So that way, although I'm hydrating and everything, but the electrolytes you know, help me not overhydrate or, or hurt myself. So I do that. And drinking water is, is just super important for me. Um, I learned that also in the Marine Corps. And, and depending on the color of you know what comes out determines how hydrated you are. And water could be boring. I always have like a little water bottle next to me. But on my walks, I have a two liter camelback, which is basically you fill it up with a uh, water it's like a bladder you put in your backpack. I have my keys in there, my phone in there, my tanning glasses because Planet Fitness has tanning. And I drink my water on my way while I'm walking. So I'm basically hydrating to and fro. I fill it, refill it again. I, I finish it on the way there and I finish it on the way back after I refilled it. So put electrolytes in there. That's what I've learned to do. And just find something that fits whatever you're doing so it's a natural because I, I basically walk with the straw in my mouth and I'm just drinking water and, and I'm hydrating without really thinking about it. So I know that hydrating act of drinking water is tough for some people and just find what works for you and, and that's what work for me. Awesome. Any brand in particular for the electrolytes you want to give a plug out for? Amazon 4.6 stars and above. Okay. okay. <laughs> with a lot of more reviews, not just one. Yeah, no, I've heard different research. ones like IV Drip, I think it's called, or like IV Drops. There's like different brands out there for. Like I don't know. You know what? Maybe there is a brand that I'm consistent with because I just order, but I try not to stay too loyal for every brand because I've had instances where I absolutely love this brand, but then they stop for whatever reason. Now I'm stuck and I got to find it. So I always want to keep change it up a bit. For example. If you guys can't tell, I usually get a haircut at least once a week. And I have my barber that I go to, but I always like to go to other barbers because just because my barber stops doesn't mean I'm going to stop getting a haircut. So I always want to try to find ways to come up with alternatives that work. Sometimes it's a miss and sometimes it's a hit. 
it's it's probably good and bad. It's good for me because I, I'm not stuck to one provider, but it's bad because I'm not 100% loyal. But Mac and Apple computers, I'm pretty loyal to that. So if I'm loyal to that brand, I'm really loyal to that brand. Right. All right. Well, well thanks so much for you today. Yes. Thanks for sharing that. We really appreciate that. So here at Friends from Wild Places, every episode, every month, we support a nonprofit. So for the next three, no, this will be episode one. Uh, we got another two with Carlos. So oh. the next three part of the series, we will be supporting Wounded Warrior Project. That will be found at support.woundedwarriorproject.org. So Carlos, please tell us a little bit about this organization and how we can support it. All right, so that Wounded Warriors is veterans that were serving and they got injured during their, their time serving. And a lot of these veterans, they go, they join the, mil the military whole, meaning, meaning they have all their limbs, their body parts, everything. And then when you're serving, things happen. You might lose something, you, a sight, your arms, hands, whatever. You become disfigured. And it's such an emotional thing because you see your older pictures and they see who you are now and it's a, it's an internal battle and then you can't do the things that you used to do not only do you not feel the same way you can't do the things you used to do and it's a battle to even you know live your life so when you're in that dark place it's easy to feel like you're alone completely and the wounded warrior project is designed to help veterans that are going through that to remind them that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, they, there's other people that are going through that. So it's not only to support program as a community, they also fund certain projects. They also do things to help make these veterans that don't feel whole, whole again, the best way they can. And I've seen so many successful uh, outcomes because of it and i feel like if it didn't exist these you know so many bad things could have happened to you know these great people would have not been with us if it, if it wasn't for these organizations so wounded warrior project is a big deal because i know i know several service members that are like that i'm glad you know i i i, I thank god for my circumstances and there's a guilt that I have like, oh my God, I came back. Some people didn't. And the ones that did, they they got hurt. They didn't come back whole. So how do I help? How do I contribute? This is one of those organizations that you may not be able to have the time to do it, but any little bit that you could to support this project, you're helping people that are already thinking about their country first and people first before them. Now it's time to kind of think about them too. And they're not going to think about themselves. They're, they're just not. They're just... They're selfless. They're not going to do anything. And this is just a, a program designed for people like that. So when the warrior project, big, big organization, if you can support it um, they they can use your help. Hmm. I love that. Yeah. So listeners, please go and, and take some time out of your day and go to support.woundedwarriorproject.org. <laughs> the donation tab is right on the top. You can't miss it. But if you want to look into it a little bit further, all the information is on the website. It is amazing. And um, some of their stories are so heartbreaking. And I can only imagine, well, I can't imagine what they're going through and what a life like that could be like. So the struggles inside of themselves, the you know, what you're talking about, the demons that they fight after returning, as you say, not whole. I mean, all we can do is just give and do whatever we can in whatever way, shape or form that might be to give back to them and give them hope and give them a smile and, and faith that they can finish Absolutely. their life on yep. this earth. Um, yeah, and it, even if you can't give money, listen, by helping promote Wounded Warrior Project, exposing that, 
if if you get the chance to volunteer, it's not just about money. It's whatever you could do. They'll they'll take any type of support because there's so many different areas that that they support their their members and um and time, money, time. services, anything. If you can put it out there, they'll, they'll take it. Right, right. Because they can, they can finish this life with their nose held high and live it to the best of their, you know, live life to the fullest. They can still do. Oh that. yeah, it's not lost on them. They can still. There's a section. There's a section for like you know success stories they were able to capture, and you know it's gonna it's gonna blow your mind. You're gonna be like, wow. Mm-hmm. People, you thought that would if, if it was you, you'd be like, oh my god, that if I was me, I would have never. I would have given up or whatever. But you, when you see these stories that like they, they attributed their their success or their trajectory to the fact that there was an organization like that to build them up and then to be surrounded by others like them. So it's it's such a beautiful it, it's such a beautiful it's it sucks because what got them to that point. But then you know, you see life differently when when something like that happens, you start appreciating things that you never really thought about. Like the other day. I was watching TV and I'm not trying to minimize it, but I was watching TV and then my, I was playing with my dog and then she hit my eye and I'm thinking, Oh my God, I couldn't even see it out of my eye. It was at that moment I realized, Oh my God, what if I, you know, I can't see anymore. I, I, I started kind of panicking a little bit, but I started appreciating my sight. I started appreciating those little things that, you know, at least I have a dog I have, I'm able to see. So there's so many things that we take for granted mm-hmm. that you don't recognize. And then if there's anyone that really understands value, are these guys for sure. These guys definitely understand the value of just even the little things that we never would have thought would have been important. So 100%. A big, big help. Anything you could do. Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. We have come to the part of the podcast where we're going to, be... <laughs> <laughs> where they're going to, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a lighthearted question to end the podcast off. So this is going to be fun. Uh, the question that I wanted to ask us is, what is the one thing that you have on your bucket list right now that you would like to achieve in the next, if not 2024, possibly in 2025? But what, what is that one thing that's at the top of the bucket list right now? Tanya, go ahead. Okay, so it's actually a physical goal. Okay, so like... I know this may sound simple or minimal to Carlos, who sounds like extreme marine. No. I want to be able to do a proficient pull-up, a proficient pull-up. Like that is, I've been trying that. I worked at it and I'm, I'm going to get it for 2024. What's a, what's a proficient pull-up? What's that well, mean? To be able to actually go above the pole, like an actual. Okay. So like your, your, your arms yeah. locked out and then being able to pull yourself up. Yeah, I want to be able to do the front one though. That's one. not easy. It's no, it's not it's easy. Funny. Yeah, sure, Marines do it, but it's not easy. So you could do it though. I'm sure you could. I'm trying. I'm trying. So I'm gonna make it 2024 a goal. That is my bucket list to be able to. This one doesn't. I don't want. I don't know. I'm not really interested in whatever this part. But the forward overhand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we call that overhand and then underhand. Is, yeah, that, that's, so what, that's what we call it. Yeah, it's the if, <laughs> it's yeah, we'll, we'll put your hands up. hand pull ups. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Okay, that's awesome, Tanya. And I'm going to be supporting you with that all the way. What about yourself, Carlos? Man, all right. Uh, I have a, I have several short term goals, uh, but one big one that I think I think would be a big deal is I want to help 25 entrepreneurs break $1 million in sales revenue, 25. So that's my goal for 2024. If I exceed that, great. But 25 is my my minimum. I like that. I like that. That sounds awesome. So I'm not sure if I'm going to be achieving this in 2024. That's why I said, you know, if it's on the top of your bucket list, then that's fine. So for me, it's to see the Northern Lights. Oh, nice. Oh, is that like the nighttime, uh, like the stars? and? It's that blue green. Uh, at Where night. is that? At? What's that? Where is that? Excuse my Iceland? ignorance. We can, oh, Iceland. Apparently, you can see it in Iceland. It's it's the North Alaska side of things. Apparently, you see it quite often there. Okay, so, it's not 2024, but I'm definitely going to put that on my bucket list. Northern yeah, Lights. Northern I, I'm a traveler, so <laughs> Northern Lights in Iceland. And I I learned that Iceland has no ice and Greenland has no grass. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've never been. 
<laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so yes. So with that, that does bring us to the end of the podcast. So thank you so much to Tanya and Carlos. If you could just take a moment for the listeners, if they've really connected with you through this episode today, please just tell them where they can reach out to you and contact you if they would like to. Tanya, go ahead. Okay, so most of the listeners know I don't have a TV. I haven't watched TV in about 28 years. So I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. That is my hub. I am not techie like Carlos, but LinkedIn I know pretty well. So I spend a lot of time there. Um, you can find me and uh, be able to you know, connect with me, get together for a one-to-one. -one. I am a professor at Miami-Dade College at the North Campus. I do oversee the mortuary program there. I'm also involved in senior placement, matching people who can no longer live alone with a community they're able to thrive in. In addition, I do serve as expert witness for anyone that has any interaction with a funeral home or cemetery that has situations. So those are the areas that I dabble with, but just happy to connect and share any words of inspiration to anyone, including career changes. Anybody want to become a funeral director and embalmer, maybe never knew much about it, by all means, contact me. We are one of three programs in the state of Florida. So how about you, Carlos? Okay. I'm not that big on LinkedIn. I, I do have automations running through LinkedIn. However, miamimarketer.com is the hub for everything. But if you really want to interact with me and see most of my stuff, I usually put it on Instagram first. So at Miami Marketer, all one word, I'm there. And if you are a high ticket service provider, meaning that you provide like lawyers, uh, coaches, consultants, basically if you're charging four figures and above for your services, I can build you a system that will help you get to that $1 million mark. So a $1 million mark and beyond. So if you need to reach out to me, at Miami Marketer. My email address is carlos at miamimarketer.com. If you want to find me anywhere else, Sergeant Poppy should probably be out there somewhere. So I, I did buy that domain too, just in case, because I haven't let it go. I have, I've had it since I was a recruiter and I'm going to keep that till, I don't know, till the end. Oh, I love that. Well, yes. So you can find me and friends from wild places on LinkedIn as well. But you can also find us at friendsfromwildplaces.buzzsprout.com as well as all the platforms, Spotify, iTunes. You'll find us on all of them. You just have to search Friends from Wild Places. You will find us there. But please go ahead. You find us on YouTube as well. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what you think. We'd love to hear from you. But another way of coming to see all three of us is if you come and join us at our virtual networking group every Tuesday on Zoom at 7.30 EST time, Miami Partners. Come and join us. You can find us at Miami Partners, BNI, MiamiPartners.com. Did I get That's that it. right, Carlos? Yeah, you got it. You, you got it. You remember is that? Wow. I'm impressed. <laughs> Carlos, Carlos is our fearless leader, so he is our president. So uh, happy to support the mission. Listen, that just means that I just run the meeting because the real work is done by the, the everyone else behind the scenes. Like, like Shireen, you're doing the visitor hosting. Tanya, you're preparing for all these educational moments. And Maria Magak, she's the vice president. She's the one that she has her plate really full. Like I used to be, I did that role back in the day. And she's the one that really kept keeps everything. She's like the glue for everything else. And Patricia, I'm not saying she's not the glue, but her plate is not as full as Maria's. And when you're a vice president, you know exactly what that means. So president, I think it's fun. I'm just uh, just running the show, baby. That's all, that's all I do. Basically a, a weekly podcast with a bunch of pros. Absolutely. Come and find us there. Come and join us there. Uh, you you can just come and visit. There's no pressure. Um, and with that, thank you so much for listening. And we'll see you next time, guys. And remember, you got this and stay wild. Bye, guys. Dali. Bye. You've been listening to Friends from Wild Places with Shireen Buerta. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast from the links to catch every episode and unleash your passion.